In this video, we're going to look at forms, how we embed a form in a page, different types of form, how you can edit a form, and how the form can be set up to automatically email you the details, and also that, that those details can be kept um, within the back part of Weebly so that you can incorporate that information in mail shots. So here we go. This is back into the builder again. And we grab, first of all, contact form. So there are three different types of form, RSV form, contact form, uh, and one other. So you can, first of all, you can change the title. If you want to put the title inside the form, you can do that. So you can put the title in the form, or you could put it in text above the form and leave the title of the form separate. And then this form is a contact form. So it's just got um, a name, email, and comment. A name, email, and comment, first name, last name, email, and comment. Uh, they're all required they've got a red star by them you can see we've ticked required that means they have to be filled in before you can submit the form you can turn off required if you don't need the name but you must have the email email has to be on otherwise you can't get the email of course you can put instructions on any field so the instructions box will be there so when the form is published um, if somebody's filling in the form and they're not sure what to put in they can click on the little instruction notification and it'll show them uh, tell them what to do uh, you can change the layout so you can put a margin in and around the fields on each field in the form. Um, each field has um, obviously email and name are specifics. Comments is basically a text box and you can have a large text box or a small text box for a short amount of text or a large amount of text. Now when you click submit, the button submit, it'll send um, that data to your chosen email address. So you put your email address in there and then I would suggest you choose Google Capture so that you can limit the amount of spam you get. Opt-in enables you to have an opt-in for, subscri for subscriber and you can make that required so that people have to opt-in. Obviously they would then know they are subscribing. Um, and then you can have a link which goes to a, one a page on your website which says thanks very much and maybe gives you a freebie or something or you can just have a message that says thank you so you can have either of those after the um after the form has been submitted you can also change change the text of the form um, and then you save the form once you've finished and then the form is inside the page and then you can move that box around the page uh, as long as there's room for it as you would with any other box So then we've also got, um, as you can see on the side, the build box has changed. So we, instead of being the standard build, we've got other options. So this is the form build box. So we can drag into that check boxes. So this is for multiple choice questions. So we can have check, check boxes and then you just change the options you want. You can make it so that you have to fill in the form or that you, it's a, um, it doesn't have to be, uh, a specific question you have to answer or that you have to answer it. You can either add pre-programmed answers or you can add in your own options. Um, you can put instructions into each one and you can add different fields. So there's check boxes, there's radio buttons. Um, so this is drop down box. So same again, you can have various options to put in or you can choose the predefined options. Um, and then you can submit. So any questions, any information you're trying to get off your customer can be in the form of check boxes or drop down boxes. Drop down boxes, obviously only one answer. Check boxes could be more than one answer and radio buttons can be more than one answer. Um, you'll get to a point when you get over five fields in the form where it re reminds you that you're going to have to upgrade from the free plan in order for this to publish. You can still keep working with the form. It's just that it won't publish if it's got more than five. What you can do is delete one of the fields if you're feeling that one of the fields isn't necessary, and then you can add another field in. And that's our uh, radio buttons. So you can get quite a bit of data from somebody on this basis. You, there's also a... Um, an upload button so that people can upload an image file or a text file, maybe a CV or something like that. Again, that isn't on the free plan. You'd have to be on one of the uh, paid plans. Um, you can also upload things like phone number and um, uh, you can also embed 
text within the form and you can also embed code within the form. So if you've got code from a, another supplier that something, a, a GIF or something like that, you can embed that into the form. Um, and you can put images in the form to make it more user friendly. So, so the bottom part of it, the basic stuff, um, you've got text and images and headers. That's what you're putting in to make the form look good. And then you've got the actual fields themselves, which are what the uh, user of the form fills in. As you can see, when you've got, do you see file upload top left? And it's got a little zigzag, a yellow zigzag or orange zigzag. That means that um, that's warning you that that is um, a premium plan option only. So um, it, it won't be charged for it when you use it. But if you publish, it'll tell you you've got to pay more for the premium plan in order to use that feature. Okay, so we just I'm just deleting some of these boxes so that we can incorporate other stuff. So here I'm dragging in some text. So that's not a that's not a form or a field. That's for me to type in instructions or or to type in a thank you or whatever. So you can type stuff into the form there just to communicate with the person who's filling out the form. And then we can also put an image in. So um Again, it might be with that image, for example, as well. Once the image is in there, it might be that you want it linked to something. So that image might say, go to our help site or help page. And then you can click on that image. And as long as you've attached a link to that image, you'll be, it'll take you to the, to another page. So basically the form has its own builder within the builder. So when you're in a form, remember that you've got all the options to your left hand side where the builder used to be. And then you can adjust and edit within the form like you would with any other page. And then once you've finished with the form and you've added all you want, you just scroll down, go to top right and hit save. And that will save the form. Remember to set an option for the form when it submits to go to an email address you're going to be attending. Otherwise, the form data will just go to nowhere. Okay, and that is forms.